This is the history of how South Lake came to be, told by the community leaders who made it happen. This is Table Talk with Mayor John Huffman. Hey everybody, it's Mayor John Huffman. Welcome to episode three of Table Talk. And if you guys have listened to the first two episodes, you know that this podcast is really centered around some old stories uh, from a time where South Lake is not the South Lake that we all know and love, uh, but told by the people that helped build this place into the wonderful community it is today. And today I've got two guests. I'll call them pillars of the community in many, many ways. We've been in South Lake for a long time, and you're going to really love some of these stories, guys. I'm with Joy Milner and Bobby Rawls. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Good stories coming I, ahead. You know, uh, I've mentioned a couple of to a couple of people that I'm interviewing you guys on this, and that's the that's the reaction that everyone gives. It's like, oh, they're going to have some good <laughs> stories. But you guys have been here for a long time. So first, I guess tell everybody when you moved. I know, Joey... Your family's been here for a long time, Bobby. Uh, you guys, t tell us when you came here and, and kind of what got you here. Well, we, we lived in Irving, and I went to high school in Irving, and we had we needed a place for horses and cows. And so back then, 114 was two lane, and, and we were out in the country. And Rick nailed it, the 3,500 acres, about what we figure we have in our, our land as well. And so that's where we built a horse place. And... Uh, I think Bobby came for other different reasons. But. Well, we came, we, we grew up in Irving, too. Did y'all know each other in Irving? I, I knew who oh. his family was. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Joey's a lot younger than me, a lot skinnier than me now. Uh, yeah, Joey, I gotta say, it's totally off topic, but you look great, man. You lost Thank a lot of weight. Well you look marvelous. Bobby, you look great, too, though. I don't want to uh, shortchange you, okay? Well, we all you know, really coming good. off a heart attack, I feel good to be here. Yeah, Every absolutely. day I see the ceiling fan turn, I cheated life another day, so. That's a good perspective. I feel good. But, no, uh, when I got out here, Cosmakers, the guy who basically developed, you know, 32 neighborhoods here in South Lake. He came out, moved three horses or three houses down from Old Dragon Stadium, and he was in the middle of building his house. And the more I brought my wife out here, he said, "You know," she said, "I, I like that, but it's almost Oklahoma, isn't it?" <laughs> and it felt like it's only 11 miles from Irving, but it was a two-lane road. Mm. 1709 was a two-lane Caliche road. That's amazing. So when we got out here. Uh, I drove out here one day and, you know, I'd sold my town home in Irving and drove out here and asked Koss, where would I go to find some acreage? He goes, just go down Carroll, take a ride on Dub, and you'll see all the acreage you want. Back then, I was had my Motorola brick phone and I saw a little piece of wood tapped to some pecan trees right there at Dub and Watch Chapel. Called the lady and I said, I'm interested in your acreage. How many acres is this? And it's right on the corner of Dove and White Chapel. And I said, You know, how much? And she goes, Oh, it, it's a lot, honey. And I said, Well, okay, why, what's a lot? She goes, No, it's, it's really a lot. And I said, Go ahead and tell me. And she goes, it's 23,000 oh for gosh. two and a half acres. <laughs> and I said, 23,000. She goes, I'll take 19. <laughs> so I said, where are you? I'm going to come give you a check. And I want it. I want to buy it. And I went back to Koss. This is 20 minutes later. I made the deal. Took Miss Amaya. It's the Amaya edition. There were like, I think there was... 12 acres that she owned. It was a pecan orchard. I had wow. got 25 trees on my lot. My lot went all the way where the fire station is, across, all the way out across, to the roundabout, the, the, yeah. all the way to the roundabout. So that was oh, where my house sat. Because that went around south of you or north of you? It, it went it went to the north of okay. me. Okay. And then they had to line it up yeah. at one time. My my acreage set out right where the roundabout's at. Yeah. And to get onto Dub from 114, you had to come to Watch Chapel, take a right, and then go, like, take a left, and then go right onto Dub. That's crazy. So I, 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 I told Koss, I can't believe I got two and a half acres for this. So he said, well, man, I 
was going to buy that place. <laughs> and I said, well, it's bought. I gave her my earnest money, and That's we hilarious. made a deal. And, I mean, when I moved here, there was 4,000 people in this That's town. Amazing. So it yeah. was uh, it was a great move for us. We yeah. lived there for 30 years, and, you know, we got here. The only place you could go eat in South Lake, two places, Dairy Queen and the Shell Station out on Davis. In 1709. Wow. That was the only gas station out here besides Magic Mike's at 114. I thought it was a Diamond Shamrock. Well, it was when you, but it people know it is the Shell Station there now. But it was. <laughs> and you're so you still run horses on your property. We, we still, my mom is is still still competing at at, at today, I guess. And you have how many how many acres out there on the about 122. Is that how big it was when you moved? Like, did you buy a ranch? Did we, you kind of piece it together? No, originally we didn't have the triangle that's up on 114. That was bought later, and then there's 10 acres that my there's two families that own it. My family, my me and my cousins now, and um, there's 10 acres that my family owns. Yeah, with two houses on it. Yeah. So you kind of piece it together over the years, and but it's hard, but all, in all, it's about 122 acres. You guys have seen so much change in South Lake. It's pretty oh, amazing. Just, just a little bit. Uh, what? Uh, so I, lo I always love to kind of hear mindsets back then, like when you guys moved here back in the you know the 80s, early 90s. Like, what was the what was the climate like? Were, were people worried about, concerned about? Did people want to keep it a country town? Like, what you know? Like, I kind of before I really met Bobby, I actually ran for city council. I don't know if you know that. And but I owned the blockbuster videos here in South Lake and the one in Grapevine. Did you really? Yeah. And then with the land in our family, they, I was touted as the they're going to develop the land. They're going and I mean none of those guys are here today. Yeah. They were saying all these things, but you know we were, were going to be developers, and nobody wanted to see the development that that South Lake ended up producing. And Interesting. I was telling Bobby through all the all the fights and disagreements and. This city has done a pretty dang good job of the end product being kind of what we all hoped for, yeah. but there were some battles. Yeah. Um, if it wasn't for Rick Stacy, we wouldn't be sitting here. Yeah. Yeah. Possibly. Uh, uh, he saw the vision for that. You know, different people along the way, there's a lot of. Gary Fickus was the mayor when I moved here, and there was a little metal building right where the fire station is, and our city council, just to tell you how South Lake's grown. If you had six people there, we had a big crowd. Wow. Uh, yeah. And Gary did a great job, passed the ball off to Rick, and after that, Rick just, I mean, his imagination was sitting by, between two major highways. And this was the Fectal Chicken Farm. And <laughs> it was where we came to get chickens and eggs. And you drove up. They'd meet you out there, tell you how much, and hand them your money, and go home and eat fresh chicken eggs. It was a great thing. Wow. The way I got to know Rick was, uh, I owned that corner lot, and kids started driving through my lot to turn right, because that was the old high school, mm -hmm. right. and race to each other. <laughs> so they were driving through, and my neighbor told me, Tim Mulligan, uh, said, hey, you know, that's really not a street. That's your property. We couldn't get out of our driveway in the morning and go take our kids to school. Wow. So I called Rick and I said, hey, I've, I want y'all to put a four-way stop sign. Well, no, I don't think we can do that. We've got to get that traffic moving. And I said, well, just found out that's my property. And Monday morning, I'm bringing a bulldozer, and I'm going to run that bulldozer and knock that street out <laughs> that you built on my property without my permission. <laughs> well, hold on now. We don't want to get real drastic. And that's how me and Rick's relationship started. That's a friendship born of uh, he, well, shared purpose. Well, we, he understood, I just want to get out. Yeah. And my wife mostly took my, and she'd always say, somebody almost hit me today. Hmm. So... I'm just one of these guys. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And when I found out what my rights were, yeah, 
I decided, you know, I'm going to give the mayor one more chance to rethink that four-way stop sign. <laughs> so did you get it? Did you get the stop sign? We did get right. the stop sign. We did. And that's when all the streets lined up and the city bought 15 huge pecan trees from me. Wow. And they lined the streets up, then they came in and bought the roundabout from me. It's a beautiful thing. South Lake, I mean, people love the country, and yeah. it's still a country atmosphere. Cultural I don't care thing. what people say. Yeah. When I drive through South Lake, I, I look up there by Mike's and see 122 acres of just it's a, beautiful. I, I agree with you, and, and it, it just feels different than other suburbs, and a big part of it is the Muller Ranch, i got to tell you. Thank That's you, good. thank you. Yeah. That's, I have to credit my dad that he, he pretty much is a one-man show out there that keeps keeps it keeps the grass looking right and fertilizes at the right time. He's still working out there. Hard. Probably cost us quite a bit to, because oh yes, every day he's he's the hardest working he, eighty six. He's a five thirty till seen. he might knock off a little bit early now, but yes, he, he he's out there every morning doing something. He what? had them boys cutting hay too. They they oh, weren't. I bet you spent some time on a tractor in your day. <laughs> we, all the fence, everything out there was was we built. I mean, it was a even that most of the houses we built uh, back before you put all those rules in effect. But no, it's true we did. It's <laughs> true. Well, okay, that's super interesting though. What was it like being around the highway and seeing it go from you know two lane blacktop? Expand, expand, expand until I mean, well, if you remember, were... the airport was being built in that time frame, and so we had Bridgeport with all the rock trucks. Yeah. So where the I call it the granite place. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right they saw the, the granite. That was a uh, basically a small truck stop for a gravel operation that had a couple of permits that allowed them to carry the gravel. So when I got my driver's license. It was a dangerous road. I mean, they, those gravel trucks were traveling fast, and and Highland actually went across the highway then. Yeah, back back, you know, and I can remember having a conversation when when uh, Hillwood and Mr. Pro came through with kind of the first 114 corridor discussions of because they were going to build 170. Right. And my dad and Ken Smith owns that corner. Ken asked him, "Well, let's put an overpass there on Highland so we can get across the road." Yeah. And and they said he said well maybe we'll just self fund it and uh, how much are our overpasses going for these days and the guy said about eighteen million dollars so <laughs> if you want to put an overpass there we yeah we'll take it we all know what happened so that's amazing yeah if you look at the map I live on East Island right so if you look, yeah. look on the map it's funny how they connect well if you know I mean most of what was built there Magic Mike's was on the corner where the Delta is it was basically was sitting in the service road. Mm. Uh, Dairy Queen that he spoke of at Kimball was was basically where the service road is now. So Magic Mike's it was was just Farts, right? Yes. So so I, that, he had something on the service road before he had the no, no he had both of them. Oh, yeah, first, okay. first he had the one up like what you call Tom Thumb now, yeah, which yeah. was really a food line. Yeah, right. That David McMahon had, had developed, and uh, Mike was there first, and then he went down on the highway and did the second one. He bought that from Rick Stacy. The Stacy Places. family owned that. That was a uh, flea swapping market. flea market, yeah, oh, flea yeah. market yeah. type deal. Yeah, I've heard so about right that. there where the Delta is, and Mike was smart enough to move there and got all that traffic coming from Trophy Club so and Justin and all that stuff because yeah. there was only one way in and one way out, and that was the only gas station on the right side from uh, Pass Row and Oak. Pass Row and Oak. That was the only gas station Amazing. on the right side, so There's no still smart. There's no Seven is the only one now. Yeah. Yeah. You still can't get diesel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I bought an F-250 a couple years ago. You got to be real careful around here where you can get diesel or you can't. Yeah, there's not a lot of places, so. So you guys got to know Rick Stacy, and I know y'all have been friends for years and years. Oh, was, yeah. It was, it was fun hearing his stories, too. And, yeah, y'all, I think you mentioned the vision that he had, and I think that was really cool to explore with him because, you know, we all sit here in, in, in this beautiful town square, and we love it, and we enjoy it, and we just think it's it was always going to be like this. But hearing I you guys talk through, I mean, it was there, there was a, probably a much larger chance that it wasn't going to happen. Well, I think having... Brian Stebbins come to town, yeah. and Rick believing in Brian Stebbins because you can't discount. I mean, Brian is is bigger, bigger, 
Rick believed in what Brian yeah. was doing, yeah. and so the team of that yeah. really, really made this come to fruition. But because uh, yeah. Brian moved his whole family here, he didn't try to develop it from California. It's amazing. He found out real quick. I need to be a part of this community, and yeah, and uh, yeah, Brian. Brian was just bright, uh, and they got together, and those two minds. Rick's an accountant by trade, and they put together all these different ideas on the TIF, how to fund all yeah. this. And if you think about it, Rick's idea and Brian's idea were the Home Depot sets was to put Dragon Stadium there. Mm -hmm. that, was the, that. that was the grand plan, was to put it there. Okay, well, so Joey, you mentioned that you're in for city council. Um, have you guys been involved in politics? I know you've helped me in my campaigns, both of y'all, uh, but, but back when you were moving here and getting involved, were y'all involved in the political kind of uh, environment a little bit? I had too many skeletons in my closet. Yeah, I think we figured out it was, I was, I, I didn't, I, after that first, back then it was just, it's pretty tough on a fa as you know, yeah, on a family and yeah. for, for me it's really important to balance folks who have been here for a long time versus folks who, because you know, this is, not, I won't say transient, but there's some level of folks who move in and move out, uh, there's some people, so you got to kind of balance all those and it's kind of a, uh, but I imagine back then there was a whole lot more folks who've been here for a long time who know exactly what, what it used to be and wanted to keep it that well, way. I think when you have these nice new developments, I mean they were moving in here left and right and yeah. The last one here wants to make the rules. Yeah, that's true. It's, there's a lot, as you just said, there's a lot that goes into managing a city and, and keeping it going. And you get people who, they love living here because, and I've asked this for 35 years, why do you live in South Lake? Because I travel, and at that time I traveled, airport's 10 minutes away. That's exactly right. It's huge and that's trouble. why people come in and out and at one time, we had a hundred of the top Fortune 500 CEOs living in South Lake. That's amazing. We had 140 professional athletes that lived here in South Lake. So every time you went to the store, you'd see somebody that was Tony Tolbert, uh, Mark McLemore, all these guys lived in town because the airport was there. Yeah. They could drop their cars off. They didn't even need the wife to take them. Just drop their cars off, go do their deal, yeah. and come back. So, so uh, that's a good question for you guys. So, when you think about why how South Lake has developed, why do y'all think it became what it became? I mean, I know we we, we kind of talked about a little bit about the how, but but I mean, there's no there's no it was not like it was set in stone in the in the 1990 that South Lake was going to be this gem and other cities. Yeah, honestly, if we'd all known that, we'd all own a lot more property here. Yeah, I think songs. the I think the the perfect storm was DFW Airport. Yeah. And then when 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 Pro bought uh, the Hunts yeah. and Circle T, and then started buying more even west and put 170 in. And 114 got expanded probably at the right time to service what Hillwood wanted to do, and then you have Alliance Airport. Right. So we're just location, location, location. And um, Remember when Ross Burrow Jr. said, if you're leaving between DFW Airport and Alliance, you'll be a millionaire. Hmm. You'll be some of the wealthiest people in Texas because when you're in between two major airports, and Alliance brings in a whole lot of you know, freight and stuff like that. So, I mean, that was 1996. I remember Rick brought him in to talk about that. That's amazing. And man, I laughed and I told my wife, "Man, we're we we got something." Well, nice he was yet. forward enough. He started. He started his 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 the Hillwood Group. You know, they did the core first corridor. They got the property owners together, and we, you know, they had. Con we didn't know what we were talking about. We were just. Out here because the you know yeah. the horses or whatever, but I think they're they were some sharp people that work yeah. work for Hillwood and and uh, they seem to think generationally. Yes, like twenty five to yes, fifty years. Yes, that uh, that's um, you know it's, it's super interesting thinking about you know becoming a millionaire and, and you and I both talked about this at cost of service. Yeah. Um, how many millionaires he made? He right? made, made a bunch of people mm -hmm. millionaires. I, I mean, true, true. Yeah, the house, if you bought a, a cost maker house, or other other builders too, in early '90s, mid '90s, for one hundred fifty thousand, two hundred thousand dollars, it's worth over a million now in South Oh, which well, is unbelievable. Yeah, crazy, crazy. I I saw where Joey lived. He moved Blanco. Was it Blanco? Blanco. Blanco. I lived right behind Rick. So. 
where, where Rick's house is. I live on the street in the subdivision behind it. Okay, right, right. Darcy Anderson, yeah, you know, talking Darcy, about Hillwood. Darcy and I were on the chamber board together, and now he's co-CEO or whatever his title is with 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 Hill. Uh, with uh, he's a decision maker there. Yeah. That's right amazing. behind Perot. That's yeah. amazing. Great guy. Did so much was, for this community. He was a Southland guy. Yeah. Yes. He our, lived right there off of. Uh, he lived in Southridge Lakes with us. Our kids married each other in school. Oh, that's awesome. And. Um, um, and now you know he's he's moved here. He lives a little west of us now. But yeah, um, that's amazing. So I didn't know you were chamber chair. I don't think I was chair. Co-chair. What did you say? He, he out on the board. I, Joe, Joe, I was he, on the board. I was on chamber board um, back well, yes, years years ago years. in the early nineties. Yeah, we had the Blockbuster Video Store. So yeah, that was kind of our connection there, and then. Well, uh, I, was at, I was South Lake Citizen of the Year one year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen your name many times. <laughs> I think I can read it out every time I do that. that. that was, uh, but we became just a, like family to the Stacys. I mean, well, I was going to say, even now, like I've been in politics around here for nine years, but first of all, y'all's, y'all's, y'all's legend continues to grow year by year. But even, even since I've been involved, y'all, y'all are always incredibly helpful with. Everything from from signs to block walking to everything, y'all y'all are, y'all are just workhorses and have been for a long time, and and everyone appreciates it. Y'all, mm-hmm. y'all help get a lot of good people elected in this town. It's really cool. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's good fun to watch. <laughs> we got Greg Sandifer elected, and let me tell you, he's one of the best councilmen we ever had, because he had the lawyer side and he had the develop. He's a, a lawyer for guy, deve- right? your other yeah. state yeah. lawyer. And he it was, was so what, good. He was so good helping Rick and the city council acquire yeah. land. And that's stuff what's like been that. interesting to me is to watch some of the developers or the quasi. Uh, I'll throw some names out like a Martin Schelling yeah. or a Greg Stanford, and everybody thinks they're just going to hand the keys to the developers. Yeah. And if you want to know the truth, they're the hardest ones on the developers. They very much so. They know what it takes to have the right sewage pipe and the yeah. right the right road at the right spot. And so they really are harder yeah. and probably a, a better part of helping people that, and you know as well, you're, you're, you're not a developer, but yeah. you build stuff. Yeah. But it's, it's those people that are harder on the developer sometimes than the, than the lady that wants to, what yeah. color flowers are going to be in the... I know, I, I agree with you. So I served, I didn't serve with Martin. I came on right as Martin was coming off, but I served with uh, Brain Bledsoe, who's the banker, right. as you guys know. Right. Very, yeah. very like sharp, but Martin's been a, a friend and mentor, as you guys know. And, and yeah, just, just the, 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 the systematic way of thinking through these things, the fact that, you know, he knows, you know, these folks know what they're looking at and know the questions to ask is, uh, has been hugely valuable, hugely valuable. And I wanted to ask also, so you guys have been here for generations. You guys have seen South Lake grow from a tiny country town to what we, what we all love today. What do you think is next? For the city, like what, like if if you guys had your preference, what does this place look like in 20, 30 years? Is it about the same? Is it what? Or what things do you think you need to grow? What? What? Give me your thoughts. I personally think y'all need need a music venue somewhere around here. I think, I think we've got all the entertainment hotel, is one now. Yeah. Hotels, restaurants yeah. to manage something like that. So, uh, so to that point, you and I were texting. I. A little off topic, but not really. I was in Nashville a couple weeks ago. Um, took a company retreat out there, and uh, it was so much fun. Just, I'm not, I'm not a nightlife guy. Like at 10:30, I'm I'm 100 like asleep in bed, or else something's gone horribly wrong. Um, but we stayed out till like midnight on the main drag, just going bar, 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 listening to live music. And honestly, great talent. Oh, it's amazing talent. Just great talent. But I, but I and thought, and that's what's hard for South Lake is because we do shut down early. We don't have the younger generation that can, or the older generation that can stay here. We don't have that product in town. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's it. That's that's going to be the challenge in the next it's 10, 20 years, is how do we do a Greenwich, Connecticut style retirement slash lock it up, leave it, yeah. but do it in a tasteful way yeah. that fits South Lake. It has to fit what, what, we, what you guys have built and what we've all been involved in. And, and I think that's what that product is with a, you know, even like a four farms of yeah. food to table, you mm-hmm. know. Um, you're, you're, ta- you're, you're talking about the type of housing product where where uh, folks who are tired of taking care of an acre can downsize and enjoy their a different lifestyle. Different yeah. lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Like, how do you keep yeah. the restaurant and the retailer, 
you got to have that younger crowd that say, well, I'm going to spend, you and I aren't out of 10 o'clock, well, I might be, but you're not out of 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> you're younger at heart than me, Jay. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. it, how do you get that, you got to have, that restaurant needs a little bit of business at the later hours, or, yeah, yeah. and even the retailers, they, they need they need bodies, and we get a lot of people coming from other towns to our town. Yeah, yeah. You can sit at a, at a restaurant or bar, and you can talk to them, they're, yeah. they're coming from far and wide to, to see South Cloud. Uh, Moxie's is a good example. If you're there late night, I've been there late a couple times, but I mean, that's that's not a South Lake crowd. I mean, it's yeah. predominantly people from outside, so. Yeah, we had, we had a restaurant that drew people from Dallas, Fort Worth, one of the first sports bar you did? in Town Square, yeah. Where what was it? What's it called? True Fire X's and O's. Oh, I've heard stories yeah. about X's and O's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you were part of that? Uh, yeah, we started it. Did so you really? It. Yeah, I did. Yeah, no, me, I was me not and Brian there. Elliott were sitting at uh, Kirby's one night, and we asked him to turn the hockey game on because the stars were about to yeah. play. He said, "No, we don't turn the so uh, volume on." And Brian looked at me. I I really didn't know him. We just talked a couple of times. He goes, you know everybody in this town. He goes, I'll put up the money if you go find me a spot to put in sports bar. That's awesome. And so we opened up a little 4,000 square foot sports bar called X's and O's, which was, you know, coaches do X's mm -hmm. and O's. It was a sports bar. Yeah. Did you know that? Party when we had the tent in the back. I was rodeoing and traveling with oh, horses yeah, and you kids, were, yeah. and I wasn't around South Lake much in, we, those, in that, that time period. We had a tent out back, no, and we fun. must had ten thousand people come through that that's night. That's awesome. And then we opened up two days later, and it's packed. That's great. Just packed because there was no place to watch it. I mean, when Joey and I first year, I think ninety four, ninety five. Our men's open. That was yeah. our mm. first sit-down restaurant oh in South Lake. It was table next bar. to the, the, the uh, food line. Food line. The very corner. At the very corner. Where Tom Thumb is now. White Chicken oh. Center tonight. Where was our men's down there? Right in the corner. In the very corner. Oh, interesting. Okay. Where, when did they move to the current location? It's, uh, it's probably, probably 30 years, or 20 years. Yeah. Long time. Well, so I've been here since 08, and it's been there. Yeah. Our men's was place. a little place, but God. Yeah. We, the line great, out the door every oh, night. Delicious. Line out the well, door. We, we still get a catered council. Yeah, so, yeah. It's so good. So good. Yeah. So, okay, that's that's super interesting. So, even now, I mean, so X's and O's left, uh, Red Dog Right on the highway next to Kirby's. That was a, uh, you, could, you could go see games there. You could go see games there, but guess why they quit? Guess why they probably left town? What? You don't serve chili dogs with white chili. In Texas, mm -hmm. and that's pretzel bread with they have white chili and white chili. They didn't have red chili. Oh come on! I'm come like, on. I told my kids they're going to be out of business in less than a year, the and it was right within a year that everything was on pretzel bread. And my kids get so mad at me. <laughs> we're Texans. We don't have pretzel bread. We're we're not from up north. We don't have white chili. So I didn't realize you cared so much about the chili. D hey, D we're Texas. We true. don't That's have true. white chili. I'm going to ask so this question, and I probably know the answer. Beans or no beans in your chili? I'll eat them either. Will you really? Oh, yeah. Okay. You're not talking about chili. I'm going to say no beans, but I, I I do I do see that. But I go back with uh, a funny story about Joe Wright, which we all know about. Yeah. yeah. Um, when when Brian was in ill health. We would play a penny poker game at Terry Wilkinson's house That's fun. to do something with Brian uh, once, once I think it was once a once a month, and uh, one night, uh, who was it? I think it was it was uh, the home builder uh, was in the band. Uh, I'll think of his name in that, but he brought chili with beans in it, and Joe would not eat supper. <laughs> Terry had to call up to Vaccaro no. and order him a hamburger. He would not eat it. <laughs> so that's that's the true Texas. That's, uh, that's, uh, yeah. that's emotion. That's a he's a purist. Yeah. That's hilarious. Didn't bother me, but 
Hey. I know I made it both ways. I actually took chili with beans to a chili contest, and I got so I got some. You got last place. Mean? No, I wasn't last place. It was delicious, right? I got some mean looks and some mean comments. I'm like, oh, I didn't realize it was a thing. Doesn't bother me. No, doesn't bother That's me. That's funny. Well, I'll tell you what. Though, going back to Red Dog Right, once they left, really, like if you want to go say, I want, I want to watch the Cowboys game. I want to watch the Rangers game. And we have to go to Red Dog. You really do. Or maybe one of the hotel bars, you know, you yeah. can go there. Yeah. But uh, we don't really have a sports bar. There are a couple things like that. It's like, you know, like, the, the, still still some room for, I think, some development and some cool restaurant sure. kind of objective. Check. I guess Moxie's would have enough TV. Oh, Moxie's, that's right. right. Uh, that's right. right. I, that's my passion is music. I know it is. You did, and you do a great job. And, uh, yeah. I mean, my little Bobby Fest, we raise eighty to to $100,000 a so year. Cool. For so, kids with yeah, tell, tell us, I, so tell us about Bobby Fest. I mean, we, yeah, I, I, I'm, it's a really cool charity, but I mean, some people watching this have never even heard of it. So yeah. we love it. Well, Bobby Fest is I love music. It's my passion. You offer me a job, I quit what I'm doing. Deal. Uh, I love music. I love seeing young kids grow up. Abby Anderson is just you know, she's a kid who went here to South Lake and. Her mom heard about my concert in my backyard. We used to have this in my backyard for four years, five years, and it was free to come in, just tip the performers. And I had a Motown band in there that would do their music on my horse washing rack, oh and gosh. that was a big enough stage for them, and they were they're just great. They're all in the same family, yeah. cousins and uncles, sitting together. Anyway, it started getting some momentum. First time it was 50 people, then it was 150, then it turned out to be 300 people. Autistic kids in particular do really good with horse, horse therapy. Yeah. Amy's Wish with Wings is yeah, what y'all Wish with Wings. Yeah. Doreen Bruton, who's been here awesome. as long mm -hmm. as Joey or longer. Um, she needed money to, yeah. to do this. So we started giving her money and then it just turned into something crazy and we had to move to the mark. And um, so we went to the mark and then started raising sixty, eighty, hundred thousand dollars a year. That's amazing. And we give one hundred percent of the proceeds back to Amy Swish with Wings. That's awesome. And they need that money every year to run. They scholarship uh, the teachers so parents who spend all this money on special needs kids they spend a lot of extra money we don't have to yeah yeah so we try to get the lessons paid for we pay the teachers and let the kids come for free and it changes people's life I, I will tell you there's one girl that came up in a wheelchair about 15 years ago and that horse therapy turned her life around awesome. to where she went to Tarleton State on a rodeo scholarship. Wow. She was a barrel racer. Couldn't walk, wouldn't get up on a horse. Doreen worked her magic wow. and this girl went to Tarleton State, has four horses, just got married. I mean, it's spectacular stories like that. That's amazing. And that's why we do it. We, Number one, I love the music. I'm a giver. My father always taught me it's not what you gather, it's what you give. I don't take one dime of the proceeds. We give it all to Doreen and she spends it. We don't ask questions. They've got a board, but great. we love doing it every year. It's and awesome. I always say it's my last year to do it. It's a lot of work. Yeah. It's 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 hard to go to Joey and say, hey, can you give me $5,000 to sponsor this? Joey's going to do it one of these days, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I've been told no a lot of times. I'm not giving up on Joey. <laughs> so, I think we don't need to hate one yet. There yeah, 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 they did. They Horses did. need hate too. They did. Yeah. Well, Doreen really needs that. I mean, that's part of running that program. I mean, it's just it's something yeah. my wife and I like so to do. We continue to do. And yeah. It's a labor of love, yeah. but yeah. God, it's a lot of work. Well, I love that you do, and we all love all, everything that you guys do and, and represent this community. Let me, because we're running low on time, let me ask one more question. Uh, if there's one thing that you could tell folks who are moving here for the first time or maybe 
have only lived in South Lake for you know a few years, five, ten years, don't have the same perspective as you guys. If there's one thing you could tell about how special the place that they live is, what would that be? I'm going to let Joey go first. Uh, you're always the one that goes first. I know, <laughs> but I'm going to finish I, I, up. I, 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 I'll finish I can think up. Of, we'll save the worst well, for last. <laughs> the question is, is what, would you, what, what, what we like here and what we want. What would you tell folks who, who, who are listening to this and just haven't, uh, don't have the same perspective as you do? Like, what, what, uh, what does South Lake mean to you of being here as long as you? As well, long? I mean, I, because we have been here so long and we are, we do have some, I want to see South Lake continue to develop the way it has in the past, and it has to be a team approach between your landowners, your city fathers, your uh, residents, and just continue working together to make a product that we all we all want. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's it's. Uh, I think it has to be a team approach, and that's yeah. why you guys have approached everything. No, but that's right. It's a team approach, and that's why we have what we have. Right? Yeah, that's that's the that's the uh, the beauty of South Lake yeah. is we have a good balance of yeah, that's right of, of it all. That's right. Yeah, and, and I think if you're in your thirties, get involved. <laughs> Go serve on a board. Don't bring city yeah, council a, a problem. Point. Bring them the solution mm -hmm. and serve. Don't bring all the negative stuff that you hear from your neighbors. If you hear something negative, go to your city council, right. write them, say, I hear this because what you hear is never what the great, real a great point, problem Bobby. is. I, in a situation just recently in South Lake, I had somebody call me on, and, and that's what, exactly what I told them. I said, you don't have all the facts. Yeah. I said, have you watched the tape? Have you talked to your council or yeah. your mayor? Because um, you're just getting misinformation. Yeah, that's so important. And then we we all, whether you're on boards or you've been here for a long time or you're on council elected, we all want to be totally open and transparent with everybody. And, and and what you're saying is right. I mean, I tell everybody it's true. Well, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants, you guys included. And our job at this point is just to yeah, don't fumble the ball, don't mess it up. Um, and and we'll keep doing what, we're, what we do to keep the city wonderful. So yeah. and you guys are a big part of that. I appreciate you being Thank here you. and telling Thank these stories. But that's all for this episode of Table Talk. Appreciate you guys joining us. We'll see you next time. This is the history of how South Lake came to be, told by the community leaders who made it happen. This is Table Talk with Mayor John Huffman.